Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a dedicated build episode, and with our newly returned mission from the uh, atmospheres, the high atmosphere of uh, Venus, I thought that uh, maybe we should put a rover down there and see if we can't get uh, a couple of things back from multiple biomes. Uh, obviously, we'll not be recovering it as in transmitting it back to Earth, but uh, I, I do rather enjoy building rovers. And so I thought it might be nice to um, try to put one down on Venus and hopefully learn from the lessons from our uh, Mars rover and our uh, Moon rovers in that uh, maybe having the primary core be oriented in the direction that you'll be traveling mostly is uh, probably a good idea. So first thing I need to do then is build out a wheelbase since we're not going with the uh, traditional uh, rover body uh, core type thing. And so with uh, the aid of some truss pieces and, uh, of course, the uh, hinged wheels, which are super awesome for um, not falling over or being able to ride a rover that has fallen over, um, because thrusters on Venus just generally don't work uh, at all, really. The, uh, the atmospheric pressure is too high to get any kind of worthwhile ISP or thrust from them, so we're going to have to rely on things like this. So, well, I'm not particularly... Uh, proud of or fond of the general design of said rover uh, is in the cores and the gigantic battery in between them that adds probably a lot of ultimately unnecessary mass uh, it is just kind of like a first pass and I'm thinking maybe I will be making some changes to it um, also we have a bunch of new science experiments since we haven't put anything down on Venus in quite a while I figured it'd be worth uh, incorporating this uh, impact hammer and the seismic experiments that come with it uh, of course, an exokerbal drill, since we'll be dealing with something that has an atmosphere, this thing's actually uh, useful again. We just need to uh, make sure using it doesn't tip over the rover. And, uh, of course, the hydrogen data collector, I've forgotten the name of the experiment already, and our awesome uh, laser experiment. So we're just going to get some of these things toggled, make sure our wheels are deploying all four of them correctly. Fantastic. And we'll get our normal complement of uh, science experiments loaded out on this thing. Just got to move the antenna out of the way and find places to put all the stuff. Make sure that we've got some short-range comms also. They'll be helpful for communicating with what few things we do have in orbit. And uh, power supply being uh, an RTG that we'll just kind of tuck here on the back bumper. Now, uh, it's very hot on Venus, and I figure we're probably going to need some radiators to help dissipate that heat. Although, it, uh, it occurs to me now that in a real-world setting, using a uh, air pass through radiator to dissipate heat when the ambient temperature is ridiculously high probably isn't the greatest idea. So, first run-through, we're going to deploy uh, a couple of these seismic sensor pods that are supposed to be used in conjunction with this hammer thing, but it says it cannot impact the surface. Which is interesting, because it's actually pushing the rover up. It's a little too close to the ground. But uh, I figure they might just be glitched or bugged out. But either way, they're not going to return science, so there's no point in keeping them on board. They're just wasted mass at this point, and they don't even look cool enough to warrant keeping there. So we're just going to reposition a few things. You know, I mean... It's okay, it's not great, but it would be um, very beneficial if we could just action group all of these experiments for a very quick radio in command uh, for when it's down on the surface. That thing just, uh, it proves to be very helpful. And we'll fold our wheels up, make sure everything else is right and true. Now we're going to try to center this uh, strut along the center of mass because this is obviously going to be carried down by something else. And I'm um, trying to brainstorm out what exactly that looks like. And I had this idea for using airbags in conjunction with, like, a shell that would uh, f unfurl. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen pictures of uh, things like that that we sent to Mars that uh, bounce down on airbags. Uh, Curiosity, I believe. No, Curiosity is the sky crane. Okay. Well, I'm running out of time to comment on things. So that was my idea, was to make basically a, uh, a shipping container of sorts that would have airbags on the outside of it, and then it would be able to unfurl to uh, deploy said rover. So uh, I started to build that out with these uh, panels, seeing as how the other ones just for some reason would not let me unlock them. And trying very carefully to uh, get the sizing and the placement correct, this was uh, a lot more trouble 
than it actually seemed to be. And then building out the rest of these panels. Yeah, I, I was initially hoping to do like a pyramid, uh, four sides and a triangle, but uh, I would have to make the base of this a lot larger than that, figuring we were already coming up on about the four meter mark, which uh, is smaller than the upper stage of the DN series rockets, but I didn't want to make a weird, much larger upper stage, and of course that would add a bunch of weight. And then, of course, I messed up on the symmetry, so <laughs> I've had to go back and redo it a little bit, and then realizing that something there is just kind of off, and the corners are hitting each other. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, it's not nearly as clean as I wanted it to be, but it packs itself up like IKEA furniture. So let's uh, adjust the min-max on these hinges here. Uh, it's so irritating trying to get them to be exactly at 90. Like, it goes from 89 to 91. And yeah, <laughs> so annoying, but it uh, it furls up mostly into a neat little crate, so we should probably take it outside and test it just to make sure it works. Yeah, it okay. Decoupling even with the uh, the coupler turned all the way down causes the whole thing to explode and parts of the crate to go flying off all willy nilly into all kinds of directions. But all of our science equipment on board is working, so we'll unfurl our box. I'll debate it for quite a while, decide maybe about repositioning some of our uh, sensory equipment here because I'm just not quite happy with the way this thing looks. I don't think I ever will be, to be honest. It's just uh, an artifact of using those two cores instead of the uh, the Rovemate body core thing. So since I'm going a little more symmetrical than previous designs, I will probably just uh, center that antenna right down the spine. I'll probably want to include some headlights because, you know, what rover doesn't want to have headlights for when you're taking pictures of stuff at night? Yeah, it's not too bad, but I think I'm going to abandon the shipping container idea. Um, it's nice, but it's really heavy, and I have this cool four meter cargo bay thing. Now, if I could just uh, center everything on here right, the wheels actually look like they articulate without hitting things, but uh, we should get it outside and test that theory. Oh, and we don't sink through the concrete this time. And we can deploy the wheels. Yep, and even when we decouple, it does offset us a little bit, but we're able to get out of the container. We can fold our wheels back up without things exploding, which is really nice. And our power draw is too high. Even with all the lights off, uh, it looks like we're still showing a drain on our batteries, which don't hit the brakes at full speed. But that's why we like our retractable wheels. You can write yourself. So, back to the, the uh, space plane hangar. Ta-da. All right. And, um, yeah, b before repositioning these RTGs, we should probably move that out of the way. I don't like them there on the side, but I'm probably going to need two of them which uh, distresses me greatly. Uh, it's a lot more weight, a lot more money, and I think two is probably a little overkill, but, you know, why not? Uh, and also, we should probably uh, shield them a little bit, get these radiators uh, attached at least in a little bit to help kind of dissipate that heat. And I don't know about going down from four radiators to three, but um, I like the look of that a lot more. So we'll just kind of see how that works. I'm also just going to try to reposition some of our science equipment because I'm just generally not happy with the way this thing looks, which is, you know, odd, I know, to spend so much time just on item placement based on aesthetics, but mm, it's hard to uh, take pride in an ugly spacecraft. But I think that's a little bit better. It gives them a little bit more of a face. Anyway, now, we're, now we have to relocate our comms equipment, and that's, uh, we can put that one back there, the ablito of neutrons, because it doesn't really interfere with anything. Maybe painting that center core will look a little bit better. Yeah, that's not too bad. Making sure I have it centered and everything seems to articulate just fine. We're going to need another core and a heat shield. I think I'll just pay the money and unlock this big four meter. Yeah. And it was right around here that the game crashed. So uh, I will be doing more testing on this later. 
But uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any suggestions or comments or anything like that right down below. I'd love to hear them from you, and um, I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you later.